Scentland, the land of scent. Remember this scene, the shower scene in Hitchcock's 1960 movie Psycho, Norman Bates, the Bates Motel. Remember Anthony Perkins in his most brilliant role as Norman Bates. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and this story that I'm going to tell you has a lot to do with the man himself, Norman Bates, Anthony Perkins, the Hollywood legend. But before I start, I'd like to pour a bit of wine. And I've had some people saying, oh, you're drinking too much during your storytelling sessions and all your reviews. And we are worried. Don't be worried. Be worried if I promote yoga or soya or bio milk. Okay, that's when you have to start to get worried. Okay, <laughs> chin chin. Uh. So about, about this next storyteller session of Sandland. Okay, storyteller. And it's a story about um, the simple fact that if you think you can achieve something, you just wholeheartedly think you can do it, that you, you believe in yourself and you believe that it will work out. It may work actually out indeed. And this is not some sales bullshit training manual material crap that I'm telling you about. This is a real story, a real lifetime experience and how I was thinking about something to do something and then I put it into action and it and it happened and it happened big time as you will find out from this story. Sandland Storyteller. Let's travel back in time 1988 May. I'm reading in a female magazine, a woman's magazine that my mom had that her favorite actor Anthony Perkins is doing a movie uh, shoot in Budapest for an entire month. It was a movie called uh, Edge of Sanity and they've done it, most parts of it they've done in Budapest. So I thought to myself, well, this guy's in Budapest, but I'm, first of all I'm 15 years old, okay? So I thought to myself, naively as a 15 year old teenager, this guy's in Budapest. My mom loves this guy ever since I can remember. She loved Anthony Perkins to bits. So this guy's in town. Okay, I'm gonna meet him. I'm gonna try to Try to seek him out, okay? So I take the, the magazine, go into the schoolyard the next day, show it to a best friend of mine, and I tell him that this guy is here, Anthony Perkins is in town. Uh, he is the favorite actor of my mom. Let's, let's, let's try to seek him out. Let's, let's try to find him, okay? Yeah, okay. So now you had two uh, teenagers that believe, or who believe that they can do it, okay? So the next day, May the 13th, Friday, 13th, 1988, we go together after school into town, and uh, I barely knew any hotels. Uh, I knew a hotel uh, on the shores of the Danube, uh, the Duna Intercontinental, and I knew that because Queen, Freddie Mercury, Brian May, and Roger Taylor were staying there in 86. Genesis with Phil Collins, Tony Banks, Mike Rutherford were staying there in 87. So I thought that that's a hotel that hot shots are staying in, okay? So that must be probably a place that maybe Anthony Perkins is staying in as well. I didn't know. I, I didn't know anything about it, okay? Uh, where he is or, or what he's doing or whatever. I just knew that he's in town and does this movie. Okay, so we went to this hotel, but we couldn't go in. I mean, like two strange 15 euros, they wouldn't let us in. So I took a coin and went to the phone booth next in the back of the hotel and I called the hotel's main number. Called the number and asked in Hungarian a simple question. Sorry, I would like to ask if Anthony Perkins is staying with you. And silence, click, another click, bit more silence. And then, yes, hello, what can I do for you? And I was like, shocked. <laughs> because I, first of all, I realized that this might be Anthony Perkins, okay? And the other, <laughs> I didn't speak any English or barely. So a, a, a phrase popped into my mind. How do you do? I remember that. How do you do? That's a great guy. So I asked him, how do you do? And he started to actually answer. I don't remember what it was. It probably I didn't understand it either. Okay, but I figured it out as we, we kept talking without knowing what we are saying because I really didn't understand what he's saying and he probably didn't understand what I want. Uh, but I figured out that he's later on leaving the hotel for work. Okay, that's what I understood. So we were staying around the entrance and indeed a few hours later it was dark already outside. He came out. He was high energy. He, he, was, uh, he was like hype, hyper. 
Uh, and I had a tape recorder, immediately switched it on and, and held it under his nose and he, say, he kept saying a few things uh, and I have the tapes and he was very great. He was, he was, a, he was in high spirits uh, with a bunch of uh, scripts with him and he talked to us for, for two minutes and then he left with the car to do, to do an evening shoot of the, of the movie, okay? So I went back home with a bus to the outskirts of Budapest where I lived at the time and I told my mother, I just met Antin Perkins. She was like, ah! Oh. <laughs> she was like, what? Really? Oh my goodness, you know? So, so from that point onward, uh, I decided to uh, get my mom meet him, okay? Um, I, wanted to do an, I wanted to do an interview with Anthony Perkins, so I thought that that might be a good idea. Uh, so let's collect some questions. And I wanted to present him with some gifts, you know? We, we, we wanted to give him some gifts because then we thought yeah, we'd make it memorable for him as well, okay? So what we did then is uh, we found out his, uh, his room number. Um, and so the next time we went with my mom together, we could go into the hotel because we were with an adult, okay? We could go in, it's fine, okay? She was very dressed, very elegant woman, uh, 47, like me at the time. Uh, we went in and went to call his room from the phone booth in the hotel, inside the hotel, okay? So she, and she, she spoke English. So she was able to talk to him. She had bought a, an arrangement of flowers and she told him that she, she's a fan and she you know, would like to give him these flowers. He was fairly reluctant. He's a very shy, a reserved guy, okay, Anthony Perkins. But he came down, met us, talked to my mom. She gave him the flowers. There's a picture of them together. My, made my heart uh, you know, explode. Of, I was so proud of myself that I arranged this, okay, for her to meet this Hollywood legend, her favorite actor for decades, okay? Incredible. And they were nice exchanging some words and that's it, okay? So it was fantastic. I was so proud. And then on, later on, we actually managed to meet him a few times after that. Uh, we, we approached him uh, with, with these questions that we collected out of a dictionary. You know, I mean, it was a hundred phrases in English or something. We kind of put some questions together. So we were uh, waiting for him. And then I remember once we, we went back to the, my friend and I to back inside the hotel and called him again, you know. And he was wondering what we want from him again, okay? So I think he might, be a, might have been a little bit annoyed because he kept saying, and the tape recorder was switched on again. And on the phone, you can hear him. He's asking my friend, because he was talking to him at the time, what do you want? What do you want? Well, and we didn't know what, what do you want means, okay? So we, we figured, okay, we wait for him. We waited, he came out, and then he approached me and said, you called me? And I pointed to my friend, uh, at my friend, he called me. Yeah, so what do you want, you guys? You don't speak English. You, what, what do you want? How, what can I do for you? His exact words. Again, it's taped. I, I, I had the tape recorder switched on. Not a camera, just a tape recorder. So, and my friend started to explain to him, it's, it's, um, it's an interview, a report. And, he, and Perkins said, no. No, I don't want to do that. No. But, uh, and then he realized that I'm backing up. Uh, backing off okay i was shy I, was, I said okay if he doesn't want to do it let's not do it let's not push it and he stepped towards us and said no okay do it what what are the questions somebody will translate it to you ask the question we ask him nine questions about the movie and how long he's going to stay and where the movie is being shot and all that and he was very graceful to answer and the last question was do you like Brahms?" which is the title of one of his movies and he was he found that funny Greatly interacting with us, great. Even though he was very shy, um, rarely gave interviews. Can find only very few interviews of Anthony Perkins ever done. So we've done actually nine questions. I was so proud again, you know. And then we arranged for some uh, gifts. I I arranged for a bottle of wine, actually a Tokayo dessert wine with his name on the label. We gave him that and a book about Budapest, uh, which he liked a lot. And um, and we took pictures, you know, there's a picture with my mom and Perkins from, from, uh, from what I've mentioned. Um, but we took also, my friend took a picture with him and, me, and myself as well. And there's one interesting story, I'm going to put all these pictures into my Sandland Facebook. Uh, so you can, you can check them there, okay, you can see the photos. And there's a photo taken uh, of me with Perkins. And I'm standing at his right, so Perkins is here, I'm here. Okay, we're standing here and the, I took the, previously I took the picture of my friend and him and they were like standing close together. And as we were standing with Perkins, there was a gap between us. Perkins is here, I'm here. So I wanted to move a little bit closer to, you know, be like my friend, close to him, not just, you know, 
a meter away or something or half a meter and then uh, and, and you can see on the picture that Perkins has his arm sort of around me um, but that's actually kind of it looks like he's he's kind of embracing me it's not it's not that wasn't the case what he did uh, he was putting his arms against my uh, just a second here against against here my hip okay um, and as I was trying to get closer to him he hurled it firmly against my move so he cut me away like this don't come any closer that's the distance I want to have between us, not any closer. So as I moved, tried to move closer, I felt this push. I never forget it. I can still feel his hands here on my hip pushing me. Not away, not pushing me away, but keeping the distance, making sure that I don't move closer, okay? Incredible experience to have something like this. And he was, he was probably a bit annoyed after a while with us because we really kept chasing him like four or five times at this stage. But he kept on being very friendly, very nice. Um, I can only tell good things about him. Um, he, you could tell that he was very reserved, um, shy, a bit scary as well, but I think he played upon that as well a little bit to uh, uh, give, a, give us a little bit of a Norman Bates take, right? And his voice, a very, uh, very, very special voice, a very amazing experience to make this, this, pers this person so many times and being able to introduce ourselves, introduce my mother, give him the presence, do this interview. And, uh, and so, so it was a fantastic thing to do and, and the moral of the story that I want to say is that even though it sounds cheesy, but it sounds cheesy if, it, if it's coming from a sales manual on, on a bloody boring sales training, okay, but if it's, if it's a real life example like this one, achieving something that you imagine that you can do uh, and, and when you're a teenager and in your 20s you think that you can actually do things, that there's no border, there's, that there's no Nothing is impossible, okay? You can do it, you can do it, you can achieve it. I, I didn't think twice that I cannot meet Andy Perkins. I was sure that if I find a hotel, I can meet him at 15 years old, okay? Obviously, the security wasn't there. Uh, it's not like today. Uh, I'm sure I couldn't do the same with uh, George Clooney or Brad Pitt today. Maybe I could, I don't know. You see, that's already a, a, a thought. Can I do it, can I do it? I was totally convinced that if I try, I can do it. And I did, and we did. Um, and I full, fulfilled my mother's dream, God bless her, and God bless Anthony Perkins as well, he's he passed away only four years after this, this encounter uh, in September 1992 uh, due to uh, HIV related illness, and, uh, and, and God, God bless him, a, a true Hollywood legend, Norman Bates, Psycho, and, uh, Anthony Perkins, Hitchcock, the whole thing, uh, but many other movies that he was great in. Um, I just cherished the the memory and, and, and I thank God that I was able to to have this great lifetime experience to 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 meet somebody like this in a way we did it okay and I thought and I think that he remembered his uh, remembered us throughout his life afterwards because it was it was I think kind of special to him as well that there was these two teenagers that were chasing him up uh, in, in the kind of genuine way way that we did it okay so thanks very much that was Chris with another Sandland storyteller session and I'll keep drinking the red wine. Don't you be concerned, baby. Don't you be. Bye.